Hello, everyone. I am Chris DiStefano, a.k.a. Christery DiStefano. Welcome to Christeries. Now, today, we're going to be talking about an Indian revolutionary who was anti-Britain, who was known for his nonviolent protests, which inspired civil rights all around the world, Mahatma Gandhi, who also may have had the Mahatmas for young kids. Now, none of that has been proven that he was pro-sex with children, but it has been alluded to, and here on the Chris Reed Stefano Show, we take a stance. So let's set the scene here. We're in the 1800s. Britain is a powerhouse, and they still have a lot of colonies around the world, India being one of them, the biggest one of them. And so most countries, they did not like, especially India, this economic exploitation that Britain was doing to them. They, just like how America, how the United States, the 13 colonies fought and rebelled against Britain, that's how everybody felt. All of British, all of the British colonies felt this way. They didn't like the political repression. They didn't like cultural imperialism. They didn't like nationalism. Britain was literally whitewashing their countries. India was not Indian anymore. It was becoming whitewashed by British rule. So obviously, if you're from India, you did not like that at all. The last thing you want is to be an Indian person who's been whitewashed. Shout out Mindy Kaling. So what is imperialism? Imperialism, it is a policy of extending a country's power and influence through diplomacy or military force. Now, imperialism, it's really only good for the country that's in control because they are the ones that make all the rules. J Japan was a very famous imperial nation. Britain, very famous imperial nation. My mother, very famous imperial. Your parents out there, they're imperialist. It's their way or the highway, and it's time for you to fight back, kids. No, JK, listen to them. Eat your chicken nuggets, you little <laughs> Let's talk about a young Gandhi. Gandhi as a child, also known as Lil Gandhi, who's a great drill rapper I follow on Spotify. So Mohandas Gandhi was born on October 2nd, 1869 in Poor Bandar, India, known now as the present-day Indian state of Gujarat. Now, he came from an upper-class family. Gandhi, okay? Gandhi came from upper class, pretty well off. Um, his father was the Duwan, or the chief minister of Poor Bandar. His mother was really, really, really religious and a devoted practitioner of Vaishnavism, which is the uh, worship of the Hindu god Vishnu. Um, and basically, that's important because that religious practice was all about self-discipline and nonviolence. So that would go on to shape Gandhi for years to come. So as the tradition where Gandhi grew up, uh, he had a marriage arranged for him when he was 13 or 14 years old to another 14-year-old girl named Kasturba. Kasturba was his arranged marriage, um, which is, uh, it's a show on TLC. And by the way, it was very normal back then for arranged marriages to happen at such a young age, okay? So a lot of that arranged marriage stuff that was happening on Epstein's Island was happening in late 1800s India. Now we have lawyer Gandhi. Gandhi, at 19 years old, traveled to England, and he studied law at the University College of London, and he became a lawyer. Um, three years later, he came back, and he started his own law practice in Bombay, um, but it wasn't that successful. He wasn't a, that successful of a lawyer, um, and he took a job with an Indian law firm in South Africa. Gandhi moves with his wife, Kasturba, to practice Indian law in the South African law office for about 20 years. Now, while he was in South Africa, uh, he experienced a lot of racial prejudice against Indians like him. Um, they were just yelling things at him like, you can't even drive a Tesla. So some of these uh, examples of this prejudice against him was um, he was in court one day and uh, a European magistrate asked him to take off a turban and he said no. So he got thrown out of the courtroom. Um, he was on a train once where he was sitting in first class and he got thrown out of first class and beaten simply because he wasn't white and only whites were allowed to sit in first class. So all this discrimination he faced kind of led him down a path of working in civil rights in South Africa uh, where he helped gain recognition of Indian marriages. You weren't allowed to be married an Indian, which is another good show on TLC, Married an Indian. You weren't allowed to be married an Indian in South Africa at that time. And he also abolished the existing poll tax for Indians. So just for being Indian, you have to pay a tax. Um, so he got rid of both of them. So shout out Gandhi for that. 
So in July 1914, Gandhi moved back to India, left South Africa, goes back to India. And he actually supported the British war effort of World War I, but he remained critical of colonial authorities for measures he felt were unjust. He said British colonizers had separate schools, hospitals, and public facilities. That ain't cool. Uh, taxes on Indian citizens were high and like fucked up. Like, why are you taxing me just because I'm Indian? And he had colonial authorities. They would be violent. And they like literally if you got out of line as an Indian person in Britain, some colonial, you know, white British authority would just beat you to make you stay under control. So it, it was not good for being an Indian in Britain at that time. And Gandhi was pissed off. And he said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get butt naked, put on a toga, and I'm going to make the world be silent and listen to me. And we're going to talk about what Gandhi wears later on. Fashion expert. We're going to talk about how Gandhi was a fashionista. Gandhi was the leader of a movement, okay? He said it is extremely important that India is economically independent and is not going to rely on Britain for anything. His slogan, make India great again. He advocated for the manufacture of Qadar or homespun cloth um, that wanted to replace textiles from Britain. He said, let's use our own product. Let's use that Qadar. It is nice. It's clean. It feels good on my nipples. And then things got violent and Gandhi, like many people in history, who stand up for what they believe in, was arrested in March 1922, and he was tried for a sedition, like our friend Veer Das, who was on the Chrissy Chaos podcast a few months back. Veer Das, uh, I didn't realize that Veer Das was the Gandhi of comedy. Now, what is sedition? It is conduct or speech inciting people to rebel against the authority of a state or monarch. In March of 1922, Gandhi goes to jail, Sentenced to six years, but he actually got out early. He got out in 1924 because he had appendicitis. So that's what happened. A little appendix blew up, and then you get released for that. I guess that's just what you got to do if you're a prisoner. Just get appendicitis, and you're out of here. Now, Gandhi was a peaceful protester, okay? Gandhi was all about the peaceful protest. He wasn't trying to be violent. Peace, peace, peace. He was eloquent, okay? Uh, he, he had this lifestyle based on prayer, fasting. Uh-oh, I didn't know he was an intermittent faster. Prayer, fasting, meditation. And so his followers kind of, you know, if you're the leader of a group, you know, like, you know, you're the head of the snake, right? So he, his, this head of the snake was fasting. It was praying. He was meditating. And so he, you know, was just kind of leading this calm revolution. And his, um, uh, his followers called him Mahatma. So, you know, his, he changed, this is why we know him as Mahatma because it was his followers. And in Sanskrit, that means the great souled one. Now he wanted to, he dressed simple. Sim, listen, the kiss method, keep it simple, stupid. He dressed simple. And he, wanted, he had the traditional Indian shawl um, from that homespun cotton. So he was anti-textile. He had that homespun cotton that he fought for. It was made by Indians. Um, and he wanted to symbolize his commitment to Indian people and their struggle for independence from British colonial rule. So, and that's the thing too. I think Gandhi, he was fighting for a free India, but he wasn't like hating and saying how much he hated the Brits. He was like, it's not that we don't like you. We just want to be on our own. That's all it is. And he always, 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 always encouraged peaceful protest. So here's what happened with the salt march. So basically the Brits were taxing salt which was thought to be religious oppression. And since Indian diets are solely vegetarian, they needed these supplementary salts. So what happens is in the salt march is in um, 1930, Gandhi decides to walk 241 miles. I will walk 241 miles and I will walk 241 more. Give me salt because I don't need meat. I need the salt because I'm Indian. Oh, Mahatma Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi. Okay, so Gandhi was 61 years old when he decided to walk these 241 miles to the Arabian Sea uh, in Dandi because he wanted to make his own salt. He said, if you can't be, you know, he said, I'm going to make, I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to make my own goddamn salt, bitch. So he walked 10 to 15 miles a day for 25 days. I mean, let me tell you something, walking 10 to 15 miles a day for 25 days, you're going to go through a lot of Yeezys. Thousands of Indians joined him in the march. Dude, Gandhi was like, he's the Indian Forrest Gump. He passed through villages. He would encourage officials to resign, you know, and just be like, hey, can I join us? Um, you know, it was a publicity stunt, but he wanted to rally, you know, the Indian people and say, come with me, man. They're taxing our salt. Like, we need to be free. And he wasn't in the best shape. I mean, this guy was a 61-year-old vegetarian who was really only feasting on 13-year-olds. So it, it, it was rough. It was a little rough for him. And 
He could have taken a train. Hey, listen, he could have taken a train, but he wasn't doing that. He said, I'm going to get my walk on. He wanted to get his walk on. And uh, my fitness pal sponsored him. And he was actually sponsored by Fitbit because he got his steps in and he broke records. I mean, he was doing, dude, he was doing 10,000. He was doing 100,000 steps a day. Now, British rule said that people were not allowed to make salt from the sea. British rule said that you were not allowed to make salt from seawater. What? What is wrong with British people? Why? Shut up. There's enough water that we can make salt from the seawater. God, stupid. This is why I, you know, fuck you, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. He really inspired a movement. I mean, thousands more Indians followed Gandhi's lead, and they all started marching to the coastal cities, Bombay, which is now Mumbai, Karachi, and they started making their own salt. And this is a beautiful thing, but it did lead to a mass epidemic of high blood pressure. Gandhi gets arrested with 60,000 other people, um, and then he calls off this resistance movement and exchange to represent the Congress party at the round table conference in London. That's what he wants to do. He wants, you know, he's like, I'm just going to represent. Let's, instead of trying to make salt, let's just do this the political way. Let's see what happens. So then he gets back from the London conference and then he goes on a hunger strike, just full hunger strike, just saying, I'm not going to eat. This wasn't intermittent fasting. This was a strike. I mean, this guy went way too long, um, long hunger strike. And um, he started to protest the mistreatment of India's lower and poorer classes that he called the untouchables whom he renamed Harjins or the children of God. This fasting, it caused an uproar amongst his followers and it resulted in swift, swift, swift reforms by the Hindu community and the government. So the hunger strike worked. So all you gotta do is not eat. So here's the thing. You would think that all of India love Gandhi, right? They're, he's fighting against the man, against the British man, all that stuff, but it's not true. He had a lot of like political opponents because here's the thing. This one guy, Muhammad Ali Jana, who is a leading voice of India's Muslim minority, he got really frustrated with Gandhi's methods and was like, you know, you're causing all this ruckus, you're causing all these problems, and you're not really making concrete gains. So we have an issue issue with that. Here's where it gets a little crazy, and here's where we're taking a stance here at the Christery Show. He had a bit of a dark secret, allegedly. Now. My man Gandhi took a celibacy vow, which he was very public about, and he publicly held for years. He said, I, I'm not out there. I'm not banging anybody. I'm keeping it in my pants. I'm keeping it, well, not he wasn't wearing pants. I'm keeping it in my toga robe. I'm, te I'm keeping it in my Indian cloth. I'm not pulling it out. Celibacy. It was later discovered that he might have allegedly sexually abused his grandnieces, Abba and Manu. It's pass. So here's the thing about Gandhi is he did a lot of great things, making salt, protesting, getting the British out, all that stuff. Great, great, great. Peaceful, quiet, vegetarian, love it. Except this sounds, he's a little bit of a cult leader. Privately, his close associates, they um, said that they conducted regular celibacy tests um especially with you know his two teenage and he says they would test his celibacy um by having his 17 year old grandniece abba and his 18 year old grandniece manu sleep with him at the same time butt naked and every night so but they said he didn't do anything here's the thing about gandhi he's got a little bit uh too much in common with cult leaders where he basically forbade forbade any of the followers in the ashram to sleep with their wives. They were not allowed to sleep with their wives, but the wives had to sleep with him naked. And he encouraged his nieces, Manu and Abba, to have nightly cuddles with him, always naked, saying exactly this. We both may be killed by the Muslims, and we must put our purity to the ultimate test so that we know that we are offering the purest of sacrifices. We should now both start sleeping naked. That's what he said. And even on one occasion, he told a woman, despite my best efforts, the organ remained aroused. It was an altogether strange and shameful experience. Now, here's a piece of my kadar to wipe down your thigh. So we move on from having sex with 17-year-old nieces back to fighting the British rule. Yeah! So World War II begins, but the fight between the Muslims and the Hindus continued, okay? India 
was and still is a very large, it's got a very large population of Hindus and Muslims, and they had a long history of coexisting, but they also had a lot of tensions and conflicts because they're like the same but diff. You know what I mean? So Muslims made up a significant minority in India. Um, they had wanted greater political representation and autonomy, and they had a demand for a separate Muslim state uh, that they've been talking about for years. They wanted a separate Muslim state, which would go on to become Pakistan. But shout out, uh, shout out Pakistan, shout out Islamabad. Good place. Muha, I've never been, but I do want to go. Now, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, the guy who we said, you know, didn't like Gandhi and was kind of uh, you know, an opponent of his, he was the one who was seeking the independence from Britain, the one who wanted a, a Muslim state, an Indian Muslim state. And he believed that Muslims needed a separate state to protect their rights and interests, while Gandhi wanted a more united and secular India. So this is a big problem. One wants to secede, one wants to stay united. Civil war, baby. So later that year, Britain granted India its independence, but to split the country into two dominions, India and Pakistan. Now, Gandhi strongly opposed partition. He was quoted as saying, drive a roll up that partition fast. Drive a roll up that partition fast. But he agreed to it. He agreed. He agreed to disagree in the hopes that after independence, Hindus and Muslims could achieve peace internally. Now, there were riots that followed the partition, a lot of riots, and uh, Gandhi did, you know, what he did best, and he urged Hindus and Muslims to live peacefully together. He said, let us all live peacefully as one. Just give me your 17-year-old wives and let them get bucky naked in the bed with me, and that will save India. And then he went on another hunger strike uh, until the riots in Calcutta stopped. I am Chrissy Calcutta. Now, Gandhi, unfortunately, gets assassinated January 30th, 1948, uh, 12 days into a fast, which God has to suck. I mean, you're 12 days into a fast. You got to be hungry. You're irritable. And then you just get shot. That sucks. It's like, I would have been like, you couldn't have shot and killed me 11 days ago. I mean, Jesus Christ, you could, I, just somebody give me a piece of naan. So Gandhi was on his way to evening prayer or to sleep naked with a 17 year old. You'll not say. And on his way, he was shot by Nahuram Godsi, a Hindu fanatic enraged by Gandhi's efforts to negotiate with Jinnah and the other Muslims. So again, you'll always have nut jobs out there. So you got to stay safe. You'll always have people that are going to oppose you and want to see you dead because of their beliefs. I mean, this was a literally, this was just a Hindu incel. This is who this was. Now, the next day, 1 million, roughly 1 million people followed the procession as Gandhi's body was carried in state through the streets and the city, mm -hmm. and he got cremated on the um, banks of the Holy River, uh, Jumna River, Jumana, Jumana Man River. He got cremated there, which is, you know, Hindu tradition. Ultimately, Gandhi, by all accounts, was a good guy. He tried his best to bring a peaceful India. He tried his best to do it through peaceful methods, Okay, and ultimately he tried to he protested in a peaceful way to bring together a unified India. So if you're out there and you're one a person who wants to fight for change, you want to go go out there and protest. Stop gluing yourself to the streets. Stop defacing paintings. Stop yelling in people's faces. Instead, do it peacefully like Gandhi did. Go on hunger strikes. Make salt. Meditate. Sleep next to a 17 year old girl. That's what you got to do if you want to be. This year's Gandhi. And remember, yesterday was history.